Foulmouth Fishing, all you hookaholics. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. So, uh, it's the new year. I hope everybody celebrated uh, responsibly and everybody has their New Year's resolutions intact so we can get 2020 behind us and move forward to 2021 because Lord knows we need a new year. <laughs> so, like I said, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, as always, I like to do giveaways, especially around my birthday and holidays, etc. And uh, this year, with everything going on, uh, you know, I wanted to change things up. I like to do things on the fly, and I like to add a little twists and turns into a lot of things. I'm not like your standard giveaway where every week you give away the same prizes. So I figured it's around the holidays. We just celebrated Christmas. How about we do a little thing like Christmas in July, which is also my birthday? So what I'm going to do is, we're starting it now on New Year's, the 1st of January, 2021. And now throughout until July the 1st, what I've decided to do is I'm going to start building a giveaway. So every week, every month, from now until July, I'm going to add items to this giveaway. And then on the 1st of July, I'll do a review of all the items that have been accumulated and on the 8th of July for my birthday, uh, we're going to do a big giveaway. So this could be any, I mean, this could be $1,000 giveaway. It could be, who knows? Um, so we're going to start off right now. But primarily this video is just a little bit of one of my little uh, spending jaunts uh, in my boredom. Going back and forth to Dick's Sporting Goods. I went a couple of times because I had a few different uh, discount coupons, uh, like a 10% off here, and uh, you know, if you spend $50, you get so much off, and I had a $20 discount coupon. Um, along with some items that happen to be hanging on this tree behind me that are definitely going to be part of this giveaway. So we'll start out with a little reveal at the end of this video, if you make it all the way through. Uh, we're going to show you the things that are on here that are also going to be in it. Some of the things that I'm going to show you out of this bag are going to go in the giveaway, um, just out of happenstance. And uh, like I say, as we go on throughout the year, uh, I'm going to be building on this box. So somebody will luckily have a large plethora of a multitude of baits and items that they can enjoy uh, for the summer uh, and throughout the following years in their fishing exploits. So. Let's start off uh, right off the bat. We'll start with one of the bigger totals. So for uh, $10.64 of shopping. <laughs> so I decided I was into uh, a couple of videos on swim baits. So while I was in Dick's, I picked up a Mike Buka's bluegill uh, in, the, in the baby in the bluegill. And then I got a bull shad also in the bluegill pattern. So I got the baby bull shad and the baby bluegill swim baits. So I'm interested to try these out and see um, you know, how they go. I already have a, bl a, a bull shad in uh, that silver gray color. Um, this is just more of a bluegill pattern which matches the hatch around my area. So I was interested to use that. Uh, again, these are normally at Dick's on sale for $14.99, but I had a coupon for $20 off. So I got the pair of them and picked it up. Instead of paying $30, I paid $10.64 tax included. So that was a good, a good buy there. Uh, next thing I did pick up, put that aside for later, I got um, a couple of little swim baits, so uh, that goes with this, that goes there. So I was putzing around and looking for some, um, some small stuff for finesse fishing, so I grabbed me a, uh, the pre-rigs of the Lunker Hunt, these are the quarter ounce, three inch Lunker Hunts. And uh, these are the finesse swim baits. I got, I got them here in the perfect pumpkin color, which is their pumpkin and white. And then I've got the clear color, what they call white ice, which is just the clear white um, plastisol. So I got those for my finesse fishing come um, 
you know, a little bit later on, and towards the early spring, I picked up a KVD's Nude. Um, this is just the clear plastic uh, shell, and I'm actually thinking of sending this off uh, to a painter to have it custom painted. Um, I'm debating on that. We'll see whether or not I, I go through with that. I also kind of want to see what it's like just to fish this in clear and murky water and really see um, whether the vibration is more or whether it's the actual colors that attract fish. Kind of like a, my own personal test uh, just to see how, how it reacts. But that's cool. So this is uh, the square bill. It's a one and a half in the nude, which means it's just blank, plain plastic, no color, clear. Um, I picked up a Rapallo's Minnow. So this is the Rapala Houdini, um, and it's a three to four inch, excuse me, three to four foot diving, quarter ounce, three and a half inch, uh, little swim jerk bait, always good. This might be somebody's lucky day. Um, so I like that, I like minnow colors, they always work well. I got myself a Tour Grades uh, 5 16 out jig. Um, this is in the Costa Rica made, manufactured. Um, it's got that really unique um, kind of barb on the bottom of it for your trailer as a keeper, which I like. Uh, it really does hold plastics pretty darn securely. Um, and it's got the silicone around the skirt, so the skirt doesn't peel off as easily. So the tour grades are, are a little bit of a step up, in my opinion, with the Strike Kings, and I like that. So again, this is 5 16ths. I picked one of them up, and I picked up uh, from 10,000 Fish, little strobe stripes. So these are those, um, those shimmer swimmers in the glass color. It's a four-pack. It's just white with the, the little silver foil in there that crunches when they bite into it. These things have been absolutely uh, amazing, sh shockingly good. So we got those. And finally, I picked up, uh, to go along with those old finesse swim baits, I got the finesse worms. I got these in the Okeechobee Craw. I also got, which are just basically old, little uh, TRDs. And then I've got the finesse craws, quarter ounce, and I've got these in the Bama Craw, and again in Okeechobee. Uh, Okeechobee, that blue-green color. So, uh, I want to see how those work out. Who knows? So that was a pretty good deal. Um, all total, that came to $3.61. Because with buying all that stuff, I actually had a $40 discount on all that. So that dropped a $43.39 total purchase down to $3.61. So that was my uh, that was my big sale deal. Um, which I'm really happy happy to have had. Next up, again, I, I went on multiple cases, so I figure what the heck. Um, this was a little bit bigger. I had a $10, $10 off when you spend $50 or more coupon. I kind of went overboard. I thought I, I thought I did my math a little bit better. I thought I was like at uh, like $65, but evidently one thing was a little bit more than I expected. I, I wasn't really paying attention to the price on the floral carbon that I picked up, so it, it kind of got me. But uh, we got in here, we'll start off with that big thing. I got myself some P-Lines Tactical Fluoro. I do like this. Um, it's one of the, the fluoro carbons that I actually use as a go-to. Um, this is a 20 pound test, which is my all around like heavy, heavy weight line. Um, again, it sinks, so this is for your crank baits, your jerk baits, your, your sinking baits. Uh, don't do this for top water. It's fluoro, obviously. That wasn't bad, but again, that was uh, about $20 more than, or $10 more than I thought. I thought it was like $25, it ended up being $34, so caught, caught me off. The sticker was, it's hard to read. Sometimes they just fill spaces in retail just to fill a spot so you don't have an empty void in your wall, and I think that's what happened. They had them in a, like an L pattern, and I thought that they were just had a course of them, but in fact, I think this was just put in an empty spot for a different line, and I wasn't paying that much attention. My bad. Next up, um, I got a few of these, so back to Rapala. I got some Rapala baits. I've got the Rapala's Rattling Sinking Blade Bait. Um, this one is in the Moss Back Shiner, which is a really cool color. This is basically like a lipless crank meets your blade. So I like blade baits. I really do swim them, especially now in cold weather. Blade baits, ripping them are, is just awesome. 
Um, this one is a two and a half inch. It weighs a half ounce. So really good. And then to go with that in the chrome blue, which is a very similar color to the uh, Mossback Shad. Mossback Shad has a little bit of green on the back end. Um, take this out just so you can see. Because why not? Right? So the Mossback, it's got that chrome and blue color but it's got that green hue down the middle, down the lateral line, and a little, just a hue of, of olive on the back side of it um, to go with that silver. Basically, you have the silver scales and the olive kind of in the, in the back end, um, but this thing is definitely one of my uh, preferred styles of fishing cold water times, um, is a blade bait, surprisingly. This or um, running, uh, you know, your, your uh, your jigs, your standard jigs. Oh, and the other cool thing about these, what I do like is they are, I mean, I've done this before. I've taken a treble hook and snipped off the welded treble so that you end up with just a by, like a frog hook um, instead of a treble hook. Um, and it makes this incredibly weedless because as you're coming over cover, uh, sticks and stumps, instead of having that third hook that might stick out and catch and hook, hang you up, by having that front one cut off, it'll fold back and it'll actually let you clear uh, a lot of obstructions without getting your bait hung up. So that's really cool. I like how Rapala's already thought of that and taking care of it ahead of time so you don't have to actually, um, you know, in a way, throw away a good hook because you'd be damaging a, a perfectly fine hook right out the, out the box in modifications. They do the modifications ahead of you, so that's always good. And then, of course, like I said, I've got this little lipless crank. Um, this one is a, another half ounce, two and a half inch, and this is a variable depth because it's a lipless crank. Throw this on that fluorocarbon and you can sink this thing down pretty good. If you have a little lighter fluorocarbon, I'd go like maybe um, 10 or 12 pound fluoro. Um, get this thing really down deep if you want to uh, you know, push the limits of what that can do. That was a, a cool buy. Um, Next up, something that you are almost certainly going to see. So, everybody knows that during the spring, one of the big, big, huge ticket items was, you know, Chattermates. And something that sold out pretty much everywhere was specific Chatterbaits. Namely, these guys. That's the... Uh, the the Chatterbaits Firecraw color scheme. Uh, a lot of people out there, they have uh, some really great ways to self-produce your own, uh, you know, Firecraw pattern Chatterbait by buying the uh, standalone skirt uh, materials in the orange and the black red and the, you know, the sharp, you know, you can add those colors in and make your own skirts or get dyes and dye a white Chatterbait skirt to kind of blend in. Um, but when all else fails, I'm willing to actually pony up and get the real deal. So for one of you lucky people, you're not just going to get a Chatterbait Elite in the Fire Crawl. You're going to get a Chatterbait Original in the Fire Crawl. And you're going to get, why the hell not, one of the Chatterbaits, the, the, um, the Snag Resistance in the Cross Eyes Chatterbait. Also in the fire crawl. I, I just couldn't help myself. I picked up all of these um, because, you know, just couldn't help it. So I figured I will give somebody three chatterbaits, one in each of the three series, um, to go with their chatterbait collection in that ever elusive and very, uh, you know, desirable fire crawl pattern. Uh, but I, I didn't leave myself out. I, I got the same three for myself as well. So. I get to keep three, and somebody else gets to have three. So that's going to go in the, in the giveaway. Somebody's going to get those three chatterbaits, along with a bunch of other items. Um, I also picked up an Evergreen's Jackhammer. Um, this one is in the Green Pumpkin. Uh, they didn't have the fire crawl in the Jackhammer, obviously. That's one of the harder things to come by. But if I can locate it, I'm going to throw in an Evergreen Jackhammer in the fire crawl into... Uh, the mix. So somebody's also going to get a fire crawl jackhammer in their giveaway. So that's going to be cool. I also, while I was there, picked up this really trippy Strike King 
um, you know, spinner bait. It's got that free spinning hook on the on the trailer on the tail end, a big thumping, um, you know, blade on the back. Because I like I like the Willow Colorado blends. This is just a straight Colorado blade, um, but the weight of this it's it's more heavy uh, chatter bait. Excuse me, not chatter bait. More heavy uh, spinner bait. And I think just that big blade is going to help me ride water and be able to balance this through. I do have to say to uh, Bass Box and Outdoors, um, I caught his video the other day. Awesome video. And he just looked into 10,000 fish has got a brand new, or I should say, Shop Carl's and uh, the, the Catchco uh, Bait Company has a new blade bait that I really want to try. And he was looking at it. I suggest, I'll probably leave the link to that episode in the description down below. Um, he was looking at it and I can explain what their premise is, at least in theory, in my mind. What I think they've done is they have the head of the blade bait is disconnected from this main wire. The blade on their bait actually has two circular rings connected to two circular rings with, uh, with a plate inside. So what he noticed is unlike this one, where as you spin the blade, it completely spins 360 degrees. The one he has that just came out, their new modern design, as you spin it, it locks up. It only goes so far and then it locks up either left or right. And what I view mentally, what I can see is as it stipulates on, on the packaging, instead of you having a nicely true running spinner bait where this is just kind of going through the water, the blade's spinning around behind it, and you're just getting this kind of uh, straight line level kind of swim, their bait is designed to actually hunt. It's, it's everything that anglers that like swim baits, like the baby bull shad and, and et cetera, that's the action that you're looking for is a hunting action. That, erratic left right hunt 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 this this uh catchco modified spinner bait is designed to do that it has a serpentine action under the water and what that the reason why it's set up that way bass boxing if you're paying attention as the blade turns it locks up and that acts as a rudder so that's going to pull that bait one way or the other depending on which side it's locked up on then it'll go to a certain point and that head will position and pivot back and cut back. That's that dual action of the, the head moving in one direction, only a certain di uh, certain uh, number of degrees and the blade at the top locking and spinning one way and then spinning the other. That is what's designed to give you that serpentine action. So it'll lock up, go as far to the right as it'll allow. Once the water flow, the hydrodynamics hits that head and that head rotates, that'll lock up and it'll pull that blade the opposite direction. And then that'll draw the, the entire bait back to the left and then back to the right. Excuse me. Right, left. I gotta remember camera, stage right, stage left, audience. That's your right, it's my left. <laughs> the wonders of, of, uh, of, of computers and, and uh, video. So that is my interpretation of what this is designed. It's, it's basically, it's a similar thing to uh, aerodynamics, but they're using it for hydrodynamics, which is basically using that, that set of keys on the top, those rings and that flat plate that locks it so it doesn't completely spin around. It prevents it from having, it actually causes it to have a reaction to the water where it'll turn itself into a rudder temporarily and cut that, that bait to one direction or the next. The head obviously is designed not only to counter that rudder action, but also to, to balance it and give you that vibration as well, I'm sure, um, to give you more of a vibration and to, to keep that running true because you obviously don't want that blade to lock up and then it start to spiral and cyclone underwater. You have to have something that, that balances out. Similar to a helicopter, the propellers on the helicopter rotate this way, you have that tail propeller rotating the opposite to counteract the, 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 the theology that that copter is going to want to spin like a top. So you have to counter that rotation on the top with a, a buffer to push against it. And that's what I see is, is the balance between that head and that, uh, that blade design. Just me spitballing out of the top of my head. Uh, but that was really cool to see and I'm definitely looking forward to ordering one of those uh, to give that a try myself and see if my hunch pays off. Uh, I got as well another swim jig in the quarter ounce. This one um, 
I don't know, I just like it. It's got a chartreuse and green pumpkin kind of color to it. Um, very, very shad-like, silvery and, and, and white. I think that's going to help me in the shad spawn. And finally, I got some shrooms, some TRD shrooms. Um, these are in uh, pond scum color. So uh, maybe somebody will get some shrooms. Just saying. It's a possibility. Who knows? Mm, finally, a big ticket item. I was bored, and I got me another SLX DC. Um, originally... 189 they had it on sale for uh 169 so couldn't beat it they had 20 dollars off so i picked it up for 20 dollars off the price this one is the hg so if you know i have my slx dc just like scott martin's daughter's slx dc in fact mine's kind of cooler because my fishing line matches the rod so i've got the uh, I've got the Favorites Defender um, with the American blue, uh, red, white, and blue pattern. Uh, and then I've got the SLX DC on it, uh, which is what Scott Martin's um, daughter has and uh, Hillary. So she's got that. Uh, she's just got, I think, last I saw an episode with her using it, I think she just had either a mossy oak color line or what have you in braid. I've got the red and white and or white and blue braid, camo braid. So it kind of blends with the... Raw, I know I'm lame, <laughs> but it is one of those things that I'm quirky about. So the one I've got on my rod over there, that is the right hand retrieve. This one's the HG, which is, or excuse me, the 151 HG as opposed to the 150 HG. The 150 high gear is the right hand. The 151 HG is this guy for us ambidextrous anglers. This is the left hand retrieve. So now I've got a DC in right and left, just so I can throw this on a rod that I am waiting for, Shop Carl's, since November. It ended up in Texas on the 9th of December, and it's been stuck there ever since. And today being January the 1st, I'm very ho-hum. But uh, I'm going to hopefully get in contact once the, the season's holidays are over and people get back in the office, and I'll try to locate my missing rod so that I can put this reel on that rod, spool it up, with that fluorocarbon and uh, have some fun. So we'll see. But uh, I look forward to getting this out and uh, working that on my new rod as soon as my rod comes in. You may or may not notice some change in quality in maybe the audio, certainly the video with this submission. If you go back to my other videos, it's not gonna be as good as this one. Because one of the other reasons why I was so, uh, you know, late in uh, putting out content, my cameras shit the butt. They just gave up. <laughs> so uh, I, a long time ago, about, I think, uh, 11 years ago, I purchased from a, a store um, two JVC uh, little miniature cams, little uh, camcorders. And um, unfortunately, hold on one second. So these guys are what I've been doing my videos with. They're really cool video cameras. Um, you know, they're very small, palmable. JVC in Varios, definitely old school. I've had them forever. Um, the problem is, for whatever reason, when I open up, I can use it. But as soon as I rotate this to there, so I can do a vlogging portion, so I can see what I'm seeing, you can't see anything. Um, so it'll turn on when I open it up, but the screen will be, will be gray, just no image. Um, and then I turn it over and it's still gray and no image. However, when I fold it back so that the screen is facing out, but it's against the body of the camera, then the picture comes up normal. But if I have to look like this to see what I'm doing over here, it's kind of obnoxious. So unfortunately, the ribbons in both of these two screens both gave up. First one, and then shortly thereafter, about a week later, uh, the other one. And they're both basically doing the exact same thing. One starts to give me image when it's about like yay, and the other one, it's a little bit tighter to the body before the image comes through. But both of these are basically, I don't know, the, the ribbons are shot in them. So as far as cameras, I might keep them for perspective cameras just as additionals, like set them static, keep them in the corners, and record. I always like these because these 
recorded on not one but two separate SD cards. Um, so you could have A card or B card. A card could be your stills, B card could be your video, or you could have both cards in and they both be video and you could record for a hugely extended period of time. Uh, but now, since these gave up, I went and ordered and finally came in. The camera that you're seeing right now, which is a Canon camera, um, it's definitely marks above this these. So uh, hopefully this is a little bit better. This camera is also waterproof where that, those two are not. So I can take this outside. If it starts raining, I don't have to worry. It's a waterproof uh, little small handy cam. So that's cool. And it's about the same size as those. So that's a really good good bonus. So I apologize for my delinquency and a lot of a lot of the stat, uh, stuff coming out. But as I say, that's kind of where it was. Uh, I was waiting on this rod, hoping to add that to this exhibit. Um, I wanted to get some things together for the giveaway. Uh, I also am going to throw in for the giveaway this guy right here in bone. Um, this is one of my favorite top waters. Um, if you like a whopper plopper and you like a small little spook or a little walking bait, um, the Prop Walker by Savage Gear is one of my favorites. It's pretty much the first bait I will pull out during the summer. I will always fish this first. I will fish it like a topwater spook. Then I will pop out those winglets and fish it like a, like a whopper plopper. And then after that, if I don't get a topwater bite, a uh, topwater re reaction in my open water, obviously if I'm in grass or lily pads or whatever, uh, in cover I'll go to a frog. But uh, for open water fishing, this is what I pull out first and foremost, just to see if there is a top water bite. Then I'll switch off to spinner bait or a jerk bait or a crank bait or whatever I want to go for a subsurface, uh, um, you know, style bait approach. But somebody's definitely getting that. I went with the bone. You can always, you know, if you're inclined, you can color it up yourself. I've always had great success in the white because it's the shadow especially in top water bite, they're looking up as shadows and this kind of gives you that, just that hint of shape and they hit it pretty darn well. So I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you some bait clouds, little pellets, just if you wanna try them. These are the little bait clouds, multi-species, 30 tablets. Um, it's that, you know, bath buzz um, stuff. I think they, they work, eh, it's gimmicky, but I figure somebody might wanna try it, especially if you have a kid, a young kid that wants to try angling. They'll show you how you can rig it. You can rig it on crawls. You can put it in tube baits, which is primarily how I've used it so far, is just stuff it in a tube before I, before I uh, put the hook in the tube. You can also tie this to your wacky rigged worm, your Senko. It'll give off a little bit of a bait scent around the area where you're fishing it. Um, so somebody's definitely gonna get those. Gonna throw in some Guggen squads. Uh, and summer crawl, these are the slim shape worms. I'm going to throw a pack of Boot Guggen's slim shape worms in there. More stuff definitely to come down the rod, down the pike. I'm going to throw in a great American flag, uh, you know, neck, neko for somebody because we got to be safe and it keeps you cool. I'm going to throw in a little live target shrimp for somebody who might want to go offshore angling or might actually think you might catch something with a shrimp. I don't know. I saw it. I thought it was cool. I like little gimmicky things some, sometimes, and this is kind of neat, neat looking. So I'm going to throw that in for you. And uh, just for giggles, I'm going to give somebody a nice little fishing rod. It's not really a fishing rod. This is um, a little uh, lighter, a little butane lighter. I figure if you're out camping, uh, you're out fishing in your RV, uh, you need to light your pilot light on your little camp stove if you're out doing a catch and cook. It's a little cute, you know, cute little thing. You can throw this out and light your fire. It keeps it a distance so you're not actually sticking your hands with little matches because you know, you keep your fingers nice. And uh, on top of that, because I've been such such a an impressed individual, I'm gonna give a Busby. So I'm gonna give uh, in this package is gonna be one of the Busby containers. I'm going to give you the complete selection of a package of each of the styles of individual interior dividers. So you can take the empty container and set it up with those dividers any directions you kind of want. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to leave in there the literature so you can go online if you wanted to order, uh, you know, extra packages yourself 
certainly, but I've been very impressed with these Busbees. Um, they're rock solid. They, in my opinion, are better than a lot, better than, than a lot of the Planos. And in some aspects, they're even better than the Edge. Um, but uh, not in every aspect, but in some aspects, they're definitely better than the Edge. They're right on par between, like I said in previous things, the Plano Edge and the Bass Mafia in their quality and uh, durability and, of course, their usability. Um, you know, like I said in my in my review of these, and I'll leave the uh, link at the, at the back end of this little photo you can click on to see the review that I made about these Busbees. Um, they are great. They could be better. Everything always can be better. Um, and certainly there would there there was a way to make it so that they held a few like an extra row of uh, of baits. Um, but for what they are and the way they are designed, and it does allow them to be very durable, they knocked it out of the park. So somebody's going to get the Busby with a complete set of interior so that you can uh, you know enjoy and set it up and customize it as you wish, hopefully. So. Let's add one more thing, because why the heck not? For my fellow friends out there that like to invibe on a nice sarsaparilla or occasionally a uh, alcoholic beverage, I'm going to give somebody uh, a nice little bass beer bottle opener so uh, you can enjoy your, your bottles of soda or whatever and uh, do it in style with a, a nice big mouth bass for your big wide mouth bottle of beer. So these things... Uh, like I said, some of these things are going to be in the giveaway, I've explained. I'm going to keep adding to it between now and the 1st of July. I will post out a video on the 1st of July, including all the items. You'll see everything that's going in the box, and then I will give you then the details on how to enter and how to win. So, uh, as always, from me to you, I hope this has been fun. Uh, I'm sorry again with the camera issues and everything else. And then before this, it was, you know, just my days. I didn't have enough time. That's why it took so long for the November um, Rush Tackle to come out onto, onto YouTube. But uh, things are working out. I just, I've just now about finished up on my first vacation of the year. I actually took time off from work. So uh, I've been enjoying that and trying to clean up the house and get things uh, organized. Uh, next is to take down the old tree. But uh, I appreciate all of you for staying with me. Um, one of the reasons why I'm kind of happy that it worked out this way is it shed a lot of the people that aren't adamant hookaholics that are just here on a whim. I appreciate those that stick around and pay attention to the videos. So for all of you out there that have been with me since the beginning and who stay around and understand life is life, I come and I go, but I'll try to make a point to be here as much as possible. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, thank you very much for coming along this journey with me, and I hope to continue to make better content, hopefully this camera will improve that, and uh, more content, time permitting, and uh, keep you all informed, educated, and entertained. And uh, also, keep your, uh, your tackle full, because I like giving, so my ability to help share and keep you out there angling and keep you in a healthy, uh, you know, pastime and a recreation that breeds uh, fun and uh, stress relief, which is one of the key things why I'm a fisherman. Although it costs a lot of money to be a fisherman, which is very stressful. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Still less expensive than a therapist. So for all of you out there, tight lines. I appreciate you all coming along with me once again. And uh, as always, I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace, Hookaholics.